Our second scripture reading continues from last week in the book of 2 Timothy. <clears throat> Listen again for the word of the Lord. But you must continue with the things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the holy scriptures that help you to be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. I'm giving you this commission in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearance and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready to do it whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. They will collect teachers who say what they want to hear because they are self-centered. They will turn their back on truth and turn to myths. <clears throat> but you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Endure suffering. Do the work of, the, of a preacher of the good news and carry out your service fully. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the most interesting moments of the past year for me happened this summer while I was attending a preaching conference in New Jersey. There was a lecturer, and she asked a group of 50 or 60 clergy, if you had to sum up the Bible in one sentence, what would that sentence be? And any time you ask a question like that to clergy, it's always, ugh, or ha, good luck. But after all the scoffing and the groaning, we comply. She gave us a few minutes to write our sentence down and then asked us to share. And these beautifully, theologically sound and rich statements full of wonderful language came out of that exercise. The love of God and the grace of Christ were themes mentioned over and over again. And then one pastor raised his hand to share and when he was called on, he said, well, mine's simple. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And everybody started laughing. But it wasn't a mocking kind of laughter. It was a, well, duh, kind of laughter. Here we all are, thinking we're these intellectual theologians, scratching our heads and trying to be all so brilliant in doing the Bible justice in one sentence. And then quoting a children's song that many of us learned in Sunday school was really all we needed. And for centuries, we've been debating over interpretation of the Bible. And that's Christians across denominations, across continents and countries, and I want to clear one thing up about biblical interpretation. If anyone tells you that they interpret the Bible literally, they don't understand what it means to say that. We are all sitting here this morning in blended fabrics. Some of us are menstruating and therefore unclean. Some of us have had bacon or ham for breakfast and are also, therefore, unclean. 
And well, you're all sitting here listening to a woman preach, so there goes that. <laughs> and all of those things present problems in the Bible, just so you know. And not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. So none of us interpret the Bible literally. We simply pick and choose the parts that seem to make sense, try to interpret the difficult parts the best that we can, and then apply them to current life. And we all dismiss some as, well, yeah, that makes sense back then, but, but we're different now. But regardless of whether we're worried about our dietary habits, our fashion choices, our personal hygiene, or who is standing in the pulpit, none, none of that changes the general theme of the Bible. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And that is exactly why Paul is continuing to write this letter to Timothy. As far as these letters go, the poor kid, Timothy, needed some inspiration. Church ministry is difficult. Everyone has expectations. Everyone has different expectations. And sometimes as the leader, you understand God's vision for the church, but your church members just aren't there yet. And even the best clergy person around needs encouragement and support. And let, that's what this letter was supposed to be for, let's call him Pastor Timothy. So it doesn't say this in this letter, but I'm going to guess Timothy had to wag the finger of righteousness at a few people because whatever they were doing was against the scripture of the time. Now the Bible didn't exist in Timothy's time as it does today because it was still being written. And the Bible, no matter how many publications over time, it's been redacted so much and so often. But we know that Timothy at least had what we consider the Old Testament. And scholars think he may even have had access to the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So even though Timothy's Bible was a lot smaller than ours, his spiritual upbringing was likely to have been pretty similar to many of us. So all that's to say that Timothy knew what God was asking of God's people. And he was surrounded by people who likely also knew, but didn't really much care. And Paul tells him, preach the word. Be ready to do it whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. And that, that's pretty serious advice. And the Presbyterian Church upholds that teaching. Because it's not the pastor who runs the church, thank God. It's the session, which is kind of like, say, a board of directors. And the session has responsibility, oversight, for all worship services. But the one thing they cannot do is dictate to the pastor which scripture is to be read when, nor can they dictate what the pastor preaches. Now, I'm not sure the early church was quite set up that way, but I'm sure if it were, that Timothy would have had the same autonomy over his preaching. And that means it wasn't Timothy's job to entertain his church or to tell his church what they wanted to hear. Instead, his job was to preach the good news and to teach people about God. 
And it wasn't always wrapped up in a cute little package like, Jesus loves me, this I know. And if you were part of Pastor Timothy's church and you heard a sermon that was difficult to sit through, I'll bet it was also difficult for him to preach that sermon. But for us, for me, for you, for all of us, sometimes how God wants us to live or how God wants us to act isn't really all that convenient. We know that God doesn't expect us to be perfect, but then we also know God gave us the example of perfection in Christ and then told us, go and do likewise. So life is sometimes inconvenient. Church is sometimes inconvenient. The Bible is sometimes inconvenient. But we are called, just like Timothy, to preach it anyway. Even if the people you're preaching to aren't quite ready to hear it. And the next time someone wants to tell you you're not following the Bible, or they cite the Bible as a way to justify unhealthy behavior, or they try to tell you, well, there's only one right interpretation of Scripture, just remember that no matter how you interpret the Bible, it can easily be summed up in one sentence. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Amen.